Cast all your care, cast all your care upon the Lord, upon the Lord, cast all your care, cast all your care upon the Lord, for he cares for you, and he knows what you're going you cast all your cares upon the Lord. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. For he cares for you, and he knows what you're going through. Why don't you cast all your cares upon the Lord? Cast all your cares. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Upon the Lord. all your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you, and he knows what you're going through. Why don't you cast all your cares upon the Lord? One more time. Cast all your cares. Cast all your cares upon the Lord, upon the Lord. Cast all your cares, cast all your cares upon the Lord, for He cares for you, and He knows what you're going through. Why don't you cast all your cares upon the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody, please stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everyone, bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your word on this morning, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for reminding us, Lord God, that you're right here next to us, Lord God, that you will never leave us or forsake us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, for your words on this morning, how they encouraged us, Lord God, and we just thank you. We can't thank you enough, Lord God, for the things that you've done for us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that you strengthen in us, Lord God, for the journey, Lord God, for the job that you have for us to do, Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to be with us. Continue to lift us up. Continue to encourage us, Lord Jesus. Lord God, bless the service on tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do for us on tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord God, bless every heart, bless every soul, Lord God. Open up our minds, open up our hearts, open up our understanding, Lord God, to the word, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. At this time, we're going to take our evening offering. Amen. Amen. If you need an envelope, just raise your hand and the ushers will come around and give you an envelope. Those of you that didn't get a chance to pay your tithes this morning, you have a chance to pay your tithes this evening. Amen. 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 My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. Everyone stand. I'm gonna hold my head up. And follow the direction of the on in the with rear. The my mind is made up. I'm on my way up. I'm gonna hold my head up. I'm going on with the 
with the Lord. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. I'm gonna hold my head up. I'm going on with the Lord. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. I'm gonna hold my head up. I'm going on with the Lord. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. I'm gonna hold my head up. I'm going on with the Lord. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. Yes, I am. I'm gonna hold my head up because I can. I'm going on with the Lord. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. I'm gonna hold my head up. I'm going on with the Lord. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. I'm gonna hold my head up. I'm going on with the Lord. My mind is made up. Oh yes, it is. I'm on my way up. Oh yes, I am. I'm gonna hold my head up. Yes, I can. I'm going on with the Lord. My mind is. Up. Oh yes it is. I'm on my way up. Oh, yes I am. I'm gonna hold my head up. Cause I can. I'm going on with the Lord. My mind is made up. Hallelujah. Come on shout hallelujah. Come on shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the choir come back, but I'm just anxious. To let everybody know we got two people with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Two people with the Holy Ghost. Come on, Titiana and, and Mondo, stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Got the hope. Listen. And nothing like watching people get the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Amen. All right. Come on, choir. You can come on back. Come to church. Come to church. Hallelujah. Hey, keep on coming. Keep coming. <laughs> Yes. 
decided to make Jesus my joy. The road is rough and the going is tough. Hallelujah. And the hills are hard to climb. I started out a long time ago. There is no doubt in my mind I decided to make Jesus my joy. The road is rough and the going is tough. Hallelujah. And the hills are hard to climb. I started out Hallelujah. a long time ago. There is no doubt in my mind. I decided to make Jesus. I decided to make Jesus. I decided. To make Jesus my joy. The road is rough and the going is tough. Hallelujah. And the hills are hard to climb. I started out Hallelujah. a long time ago. There is no doubt in my mind. I decided to make Jesus. I decided to make Jesus. I decided to make Jesus my joy. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord again. Amen. And who's decided to make Jesus his joy? Amen. Amen. That's a wonderful song. Amen. We should all have decided at this point in our lives, in our saved life, to make Jesus our joy. Amen. Amen. Forgive me a minute. Hey, my hearing aid, I can't hear anything. Oh, too late, can't find it. Amen. 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 Congratulations again to our newborns. Amen. Brother Mondo, Sister Tatiana, amen. Amen. That's a joyful day. Amen. It's a joyful day. Heaven and, 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 and earth is rejoicing. And we're happy that you are part of the family. Amen. You are now officially a part of the body. Amen. 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 And you got all kinds of rewards coming to you. Amen. Amen. Uh, what do they say? Uh, 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 membership has its privileges. Amen. Amen. So now you got more privileges than you could ever, ever uh, uh, even uh, comprehend. Amen. Amen, because God is good. Amen. He's still saving souls in this day. Amen. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's right. Just give, just, just give God a shout real quick. Amen. If you're just feeling a shout, just let, let it come out. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. God is still saving folks. God is still saving folks even in this crazy uh, upside down world that we're living. Amen. But God is still helping people. God is finding people, and he's bringing them to church, and he's getting them right. Amen? People are still thirsty for, for real truth. Amen? People are still thirsty for, to, to want to be in, 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 uh, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. People are still thirsty for God. Amen? We can't change the doctrine. We can't, we can't make it, to, make it to, 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 to feed our flesh. We've got to feed our spirit. Amen? And that's what we're still doing here at this church. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so good. It's so good to be amongst my family again. Amen. One more, one more evening. Amen. To preach and it's an honor in front of you. Amen. Amen. So I, I don't take this um, this lightly. Amen. 
So we're gonna gonna move forward in the spirit, amen. I don't really have a topic yet, but we're just gonna talk about the body. I think it's been it was a, um, as we've been talking about, we've talked about the gifts and we've been talking about the body and becoming one because we're all we're, we're all getting ready for new positions or we're in new positions and we need to be growing spiritually and, and, and maturing in our positions, amen. Many of us that have been saved for for quite some time and those that are now coming in, you have to understand what it means to be saved, amen. You have to understand what your position and how you fit into the body, amen. Now that we have new newborn, they, they they're gonna they're gonna figure out their they're gonna figure out their their place and their their position in Christ, amen. So we all have to understand that, amen. So right now we want to, I'm just going to talk about a little bit about, you know, our position and, 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 and being in the body and, and spiritual maturity. Amen. And we'll figure out a topic as we go along. Amen. So, amen. Let's see. Let's see if I can, we can have everyone to, um, let us turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 54. Amen. The book of Isaiah, chapter 54. I'm going to read a couple verses out of here. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is the prophet Isaiah, and he's preaching to the children of Israel, amen, because they were going through a process, and uh, uh, they, they were getting ready to be delivered, amen. So now uh, the prophet is coming, and he's telling that this is what's going to happen once deliverance happens for you, amen. This is what happens once you get saved. These are the, this is what, what you're looking forward to, amen, in the salvation and growing and maturing in Christ, amen. Let's read uh, verses 14, amen? We're going to start with 14 just so we can get our bearings, amen? So we're talking about what's going to, how do we establish ourselves in Christ once we become saved, amen? Amen. So we have 54 verse 14. You have to say amen. 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 In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Amen? Amen. Now, let's read, now, let's read verse 16. That's what we came over here for. We're going to keep going a little bit. We're going to, this is my main verse right here. 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. Amen? So God said right here, just hold on real quick. God said, I created the fire. I, 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 I put people in front of you, blacksmiths, workers, for my glory. Amen? And, I, and I, I'm using them as instruments to get you better, to refine you. Amen? Because once you put heat to something, once you put heat to metal, you can, you can shape it. You can create a new thing out of that, that, that metal. Amen? So, right, we need, so a pastor and, and, and ministers and whatnot, we're, we're, we're here blowing on you fire. We're getting that heat nice, nice and warm for you. Amen? So that we can, so once we break you down, once you, once you come into this new body, now you have to understand what is my position in this new body. How am I going to be recre recreated in the image of Christ? Amen. Because now you've been completely born again. So now you're a new member, new creation. Amen. Now, so now what we'll, our job is to to get that fire nice and hot for you, so we can melt you down. We can break down your uh, your misconceptions, your predetermined destination, or what you think you know about Christ, and create a new person, a new a new spirit inside of you. Amen. Does that make sense? Y'all kind of looking at me kind of puzzled. Amen? <laughs> amen. Amen. So let, let, let's let say, so he said, behold, I, create, I have created the smith. That means I, I created the person that, 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 that knows how to, how to make you better. I, I give you pastors that make you better, that can, that can, can, can mold you and shape you into the, to the person that God wants you to be. Amen? So I, I'm using the, these types of people in your lives, and they're going to... They're gonna, they're going to blow the fire nice and hot. They're going to get real nice and hot for you so that, that I, can, I can reshape you and I can, I can take out of you what we don't need and I can pour into you exactly what you need, amen, to get you better, to get you right for God, amen, to make you, to make you stronger, an alloy, a, a ring, a, 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 an iron, something, something to be used for the glory of God, amen, amen, amen. And then bring it forth, an instrument for his work. So when, once you come out that fire... Now you can go to work. Now I can use you. Now I can anchor you somewhere, and I can put you in a position that you're going to be fruitful, that you're going to multiply, that you're going to that you're going to help the body of Christ gain. Amen. So that's our job is to help the body of Christ gain and, and to to become stronger. Amen. We all come together. We all form together to make one body. But all of us have a different part in the body. Amen. 
But we have to become stronger in that body. We have to become a mighty fist, a mighty arm, a mighty eye, a mighty brain. Some part of it has to come together. And we all come together by that fire, by that fire getting blowing us and getting and the heat turning us up. Amen? And to, the heat has to come. He said, and in that latter part of that, that scripture says, I have created the waster to destroy. I mean, I, I, I put problems in your life to see how you're going to react to them. I give you problems in your life to see, is it going to make you better? Is it going to make you stronger coming out of the situation? I put problems in your life. I, I put you in situations that make you have to, have to rely completely on God because you have no understanding of what you're going through. I give you obstacles in your life so that you can get stronger in Christ, so that you can get, gain more faith in Christ. Amen? Amen. I, that, that's the waste of the waste. We can say it's the devil. Sure. And I, I, put, I put people around you to continuously uh, make you get stronger in Christ, to, 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 to gain, to work on your patience, to work on your kindness, to work on your meekness, to work on your temperance. Amen. Because if, you, if I'm not working on you, then obviously you're not, you're not, you're not getting stronger. You're not becoming mature. So I, I put people in your life for one purpose, to get you stronger. I put situations, obstacles, indifferences in your family, in your work, in your body to see, will you rely on me? Will you let me control you? Will you let me mold you? Will, it, will, it, will you let me pull, pull something out of you that you don't need? And will you let me put, put something in you that only you can control, that only you, only you, an ingredient just for you? An ingredient just, just, just to spice up your, your, your ministry. But you have to allow God to pull. You have to allow to become a blank canvas in Christ. Amen? Because once you become born again, once you become a part of the body, you don't know what your job is effectively yet until you get that heat blown on you a little bit. You, gotta, you know, you get that, that fan, they, they blow the heat and, they, and it gets it real nice and hot. You got to get nice and hot. You got you to melt down your natural thought. And put on a spiritual thought. Yeah. Hallelujah. Verse 17. This is, we love this verse right here. Right? And, and uh, Mama Brina uh, preached. I wasn't going to even talk about this, but, but she prayed this. I said, okay, God, you obviously want me to say this. N number 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So it doesn't matter what situation I put you in. Just know it's for your good. Ain't that right, Brother Tommy? No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with right now, everybody's got a problem. Everybody's got a situation here right now that they're going through. But are you going to trust in God? Are you going to let God do what he got to do? Are you going to let God manipulate the situation? Are you going to let the pastor encourage you and, and correct you and guide you in the, on the right path of God? Because you don't know nothing. You, have an, you, know, you still don't quite have understanding. You, you, you're still not praying like you should be praying. You're, not, you're not still not comprehending the word like you should be comprehending. You're still not just, you haven't got it all together. All the pieces of the puzzle haven't come together. They're not glued in yet. You have to let it sit for a little while. Amen? So let me just work on you. Let me just blow that heat a little bit hotter, okay? Let me let that pastor, he, whatever he says, you just do it. Because he's, he's getting you stronger. And the stronger the heat, the more manipulation, the more, the more stress that he can put on you, the greater the weight. Because once you come out that fire, ooh, you're something fine then. You're something beautiful. You're something that can be used by God. I can use you now. I put you to the test. I put some heat on you. And you came out with flying colors. Came out looking good. You've been to school. You done worked hard. You done suffered a little bit. People done talked about you. People done but 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 gone made made uh, assumptions about you. People done, 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 done acted like you were no good. But God saw something different. God something. God saw something. I can work on him, brother Mondo. I can work on him. He's willing. He needs me. He surrendered to me. Once you surrender, everything else is up here. Everything else is down here. You, you, you did all the work you had to do. Now it's just about letting go and letting God. Sister Tatiana, he, he, he can work on you now. Let him, let him work a beautiful picture out of you. 
Don't get caught up in what he said and she said and what he does and who does. Just, just work on you. Work on perfecting you. Let God minister to you. So that you can, when you come into the, to the body, and now that you're part of the body, you can rightly find your place. Your right place. Don't let nobody tell you what your place is. You let God, you let the pastor, you let the word minister to you and mold you into that right place. That right diamond. That right ring. That right anchor. That right, right piece of material so that you can go right where you're supposed to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us turn to the book of Exodus. Amen. Chapter 31. Anybody get anything out of this? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 31. We're going to read a few verses over here. A little bit of time. Hallelujah. Chapter 31, verse 3. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, what did I say? Exodus. Exodus chapter 31. Sorry. Exodus 31, chapter 3. Uh, I'm sorry, 31, verse 3. Amen. Well, no, no. We're going to start. We're going to go up a little bit. We're going to start with one. Amen. So you, you can understand what's going on here. All right. Here we go. You guys ready? Yeah. You got to say amen. amen. All right. Good. We're ready. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, see, I have called by my name. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Let's start number two again. I want you to put your name in that place where, where it says Bez Bezalel, the son of Uri, all right? You put your name in that spot. See, I have called by, called by my name John Cologne, the son of Ivan, the son of, of, of John, the tribe of Cologne. Amen? Well, that's what it is. That's what it is. Amen? I said to put your name there. All right? I said put your name there. All right? So he, he's called each and every individual in this place. Amen? To do a specific work. He called you by your name. He knew exactly who you were. He knew exactly what family you were going to come out of. He knew exactly where you were going to be placed on this earth. And he called you for a specific purpose. For a specific purpose in his body. That no one else can do. God is very detailed in his perfecting of, of saints. He's very detailed in how he calculates things to happen. There's no accidents in Christ. Right? We all believe that? We don't believe in luck. We don't believe in ha ha coulda, shoulda, woulda. We believe that God and faithfulness in God is going to determine our, our next step. We don't know what's going to happen in this very next five seconds. You don't know what's going to come out of my mouth in the next five seconds. But you're here to get something from God. So if God has you here, obviously he has a reason for you to be here. So he called John Cologne, myself, to be in this, in this particular time on, what is it, April 9th at 629 with 30 seconds or so, to preach the word of God. That was my job. That was my, my position, my role in the body of Christ for this evening. Your position was to sit here and listen to what I have to say. And to take from it nourishment, vitamins, protein, strength, amen, so that you can grow and have an opportunity to do whatever it is that God has for you to do. And whatever is going to happen, it's going to happen probably during this week. And you're going to have to feed off this morning service and this evening service to get you to the next service, which is going to be Wednesday. And you're going to have to pray your way and say, Lord, what did I learn that I can use for this situation that I'm currently in? Because I don't understand why you put me here. I thought I was through with the fire. Uh oh, Well, if if you're through with the fire, then you're perfected. But none of us are through with the fire yet. Because all of us have not grown to the spiritual maturity that we should be at, accountable to. So I still need to prune on you. I still need to work. I still need to put a worksmith on you. That's why we all have pastors and ministers and elders and deacons and, and ushers. Everybody's in a, in a rightly fit position. And everybody has their position that they have to be in in order for this to work. Amen. All right, here we go. Three. And I have filled him with the spirit of God. So I filled John Cologne, Mishi Cummings, Joseph Portis, amen, amen, with the spirit of God. Look at that. And wisdom and understanding and in knowledge 
and in all manner of workmanship. I provided every tool that you need to be effective in the body of Christ. There's nothing that you lack over here. There's no read. I give you no deficiency. You're not low in iron. You're not missing zinc. There's nothing that I, that I have not provided you. All you have to do is recall what I've put in you. You have to remember the situation that got you to this, situ to this present moment and how effective it was to pull out of you the sin, the pain, the anger, the lust, the resentment, the suffering, so that I can continue to work on you. The fire is going to remain hot until I get what I want out of you. And one of two things is going to happen. You're going to become a diamond or you're going to be a cubic zirconia and you're going to be it's the reveal, you're going to be revealed. You're either real or you fake. You only get, there's, there's only two chances up in, the, in this body. You're either going to stick with it or you're going to be removed and replaced. And how you go through each trial and situation and suffering and, and, and the fire that here is to perfect you will determine your category in this body. Your importance to God. We're all important. He called you by your name. He knew specifically who you were. He called you out of your dark. He dark called you out of your misery. You called on him, and he heard you, and he brought you here for a specific purpose. And that purpose was to save you. You don't get a choice in how he does that. You don't get a choice on where he places you in the body. All you do is become a puppet and allow him to use you. Be his minister of whatever part of the body he wants you to minister. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Four, to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass, and in cutting of stones to set them, and in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. Every single person in this, in this body has a different responsibility. They're going to work with different materials to produce fruit for God. And by their fruit, what they produce is going to be a character trait of who they are in the body of Christ. Every single individual has a specific purpose. A specific purpose. God is very detailed. He does not just give his, his he, well, it is a free gift. The Holy Ghost is a free, is a free gift. It's free willing. You ask, you receive it, you want it, you, by faith you have it. What you do with it is up to you. How you cultivate it, how you nurture it, how you protect it is entirely up to you. You can hide it, but then it becomes worthless. There's no gain and sitting on your spiritual gift. There's no gain in hiding what God has only for you to do by, by, by burying it. There's a scripture that talks about that. Burying your gift. There's no gain in sitting here week after week after week after week after week after week after week, after week and not getting the Holy Ghost. Because without it, it's impossible to please God. Without the spirit of God on the inside, it's impossible to go to heaven. Without the spirit of God, everything that you hear and learn is just a concept. Because once you have the spirit of God, you understand, I have, now I have to go to work. Now the work begins. But without the Spirit of God, you're just looking at the glass or the wall and saying, I see it, and I, I have a hammer, but what am I supposed to do with the hammer? You have no instruction. Amen?
You have your workmen's, your carpenters, your master builders. Here in Exodus, we're talking about the master builders. God poured his spirit on his master builders to create something magnificent. Each one of us, God poured his spirit on to create something magnificent, something beautiful, something pure, honest, truth. When we hold back on God, we don't get the full benefit of the membership. We don't get the, 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 the gold card and the, the, the platinum card because we're too busy, worried or stressed out about the problem, the suffering. And God is only putting you in suffering to see how you're going to react. He blows the fire on you to see how, 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 where, where can I use this person? And if you run from that fire, if you're afraid to talk, to walk into that fire, if it's always somebody else's fault and never your fault, because we, we're quick to point the blame on somebody else. We're, we're quick to, to, to look at other people and what they've done in our lives versus what have you done, because you never know. It could be for your good. It's always for your good. Never. I'm, I'm not going to say that. It's always for your good when people talk about you, when people put you down, when, when you have to struggle in this life. Because nothing worth having comes without a struggle. For those that, are, that have been graduating soon, those that have gone to college, those that, are, that, that have climbed their corporate ladder, you had to struggle in that position that you were in, right? To get to where you are. Ain't that right, Beverly? You've had to scrape. You started from the bottom. And you've had to work as hard as you can to get to where you are, right? And it's work, and it's work, and it's work. It's the same thing in the body of Christ. Don't expect to come over here and all your worries are supposed to just cast out the door. They're not. Now what happens is you have to have a better attitude at the experiences that you go through. Hallelujah. Momentum has to shift. Amen. Let's go to the book of Galatians. Amen. Um, chapter five. In the book of Galatians. Hallelujah. Chapter five in the book of Galatians. Amen. Like I said, we're going to talk. We can becoming a master builder. There we go. That 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 would be the message title. Amen. But now that we've become a master builder and we're working on becoming a master builder or, or we're in training, an apprentice in becoming a master builder. Now I want to uh, 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 manifest spiritual maturity. Each person has a gift. We've all taken the gift uh, test and we have our gifts. But the gifts is not, does not come with spiritual maturity. What's what comes with spiritual maturity is how you exhibit that gift, how you perform that gift, the attitude, the character that you use to make that, that gift manifest itself. Amen? Because gifts work together. Amen? So it's not the gift. There's no gift higher than the other gift. All the gifts work in the body for the good of God. All the gifts are perfect. All, all the gifts are on, on display during a, a service. That's not the gift that you want to, that you want to produce. The, the gift, the maturity that you want to see. Let's look at verse, we're in 5, verse 22. Amen? Let's read it together. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So for you to become spiritually mature... You can have all the gifts in the world. You can be healing. You can be speaking in tongues. You can be interpreting tongues. You can be a prophet. You can do all those things. You can be the best usher. But if you're not doing it with those attributes, with those without those characteristics, you're not growing or maturing in Christ. Those are nine characteristic traits that we all must exhibit to, in to improve on our maturity in Christ. Amen? 
Love, joy, peace. Those are inward states of being. That's how you, how you represent on the inside. That's the thing. All the, when you clean it out, that's what's got to be on the inside of you. Love, joy, peace. You have to have peace with yourself, with your own thoughts. You have, to have, you have to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your spirit. That's why it's number one. You have to, joy, you have, to have joy within your inward part. That the suffering that you're going through for this present moment does not exceed the expectation that I have when I go to heaven. Long-suffering. I looked up long-suffering. Long-suffering. Suffering a long time without complaining. We do too much complaining about our situations. That's not, an, that's not a characteristic of Christ. Long-suffering. Dealing with the problem for however long got you into that problem until you get a resolution from God. Long-suffering. Gentleness, goodness, these are outward expressions towards man. These are how you treat your, your fellow saints, the people you meet on the streets, your family members, your co-workers, your neighbors, your peers, with long suffering. Doesn't matter what they say about you. Doesn't matter who, who or what kind of uh, rumors they spread about you. Doesn't matter how they put you down. Doesn't matter. You still treat them with long suffering, with gentleness, with meekness. You don't have cross words with everybody. You don't complain. You take it in the chest. You accept it so that you glorify God with spiritual maturity. Faith, meekness, temperance, meekness, not wanting. To get, to get even with people. That's what meekness means. Not wanting to get even with people. I'll leave you on that one. Temperance. <laughs> Controlling your lust for sex, drugs, alcohol, food. These are spiritual maturity characteristics that we must have in the body to produce good fruit. Are you ready to meet these expectations? And these, and these, these last three are how God tallies your obedience or outward expression towards what he tells you to do. Do you do it with faith, meekness, or temperance? Are you always upset and angry with God because what he's, what he's putting on you? And what you're dealing with. Spiritual maturity. Becoming a master builder. With the tools that you have. Amen. Becoming a master builder. We're all here to become master builders. In the, whatever area God has put you in. I recently heard, had an exercise. that I want to share with you and now I'll be done. Amen. Becoming a master builder. What, what, what do you, the most important part in building something is your hands, right? Is that yes or no? I mean, you got your mind, but you got to use your hands to, to, to put things together, to make things happen. Hands are very important. Real quick, the next 30 seconds, and I'm going to wrap it up. I want everyone to close their eyes. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes. Now raise your hands, both your hands, and put them in front of your eyes. Don't open your eyes yet. Raise your hands and put them in front of your eyes. So the first thing that you see are your, uh, your hands. The first thing that you see are your hands. Look at the inside of your hands. Look at the inside of your hands. All right. It's going to get deep on you. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. You can open your eyes. Look at your hands. Don't stop looking at your hands. Look at your hands. We're going to call this the hand test. What have you done with your hands today, this week, this month, this year, to glorify or honor God. That's sit on you. You're looking at your hands right now. What have you done with those hands that are in front of you to glorify or honor God? Let's take it. Let's, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. 
What have you done with your hands that you know would hurt the ones you love? Not looking at me. Look at your hands. How have you hurt the ones you love with your hands today, this week, this month, this year? What have you done with your hands that you are ashamed of today, this month, this year? You can put your hands down. Become a master builder. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The master builder. And the builder, the master builder above all master builders is Jesus Christ. And we all have our place in the body of Christ. And he has something for each of us to do. And sometimes we get our tests, we get our trials. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. But we just have to hold on to God. We have to learn. We have to become mature and learn to just take pleasure. We got to take pleasure. Like Pastor said earlier, we got to take pleasure in our our tests and our trials, and we just have to thank him. Thank him in the midst of it because we know it's for our good, and he's perfecting us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. We're going to close it this time. Oh, one second. We have announcements. Enon Bible College. It's registration time. Enon Bible College, West Coast. Amen? Amen. 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 Please come out and register for the spring semester of classes. Tuesdays and Thursday night, courses are available for you. Um, please reference the attached flyer. Please sign up with Sister Angela or Sister Portis. There is a flyer with a list of the classes. Um, and you, I guess it's in, available in the vestibule. Yes, so you can look at the flyer in the vestibule. Amen. 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 Every head bow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and your mercy, your faithfulness, Lord God. We thank you for today. We thank you that the words, Lord God, that you put in our hearts, Lord Jesus. We thank you for encouraging us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you said to us today, Lord God. We're going to do better, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we're going to grow up. Lord God, we're going to walk in the way that you want us to walk, Lord Jesus. Manifest in us, Lord God, the, the, your spirit, Lord God, the fruits of the spirit, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. We want to be like you, Lord Jesus. We want to talk like you, Lord. Lord God, we want to be like you Everywhere we go, Lord God, we want people to see you and not us, Lord Jesus. Help us on this week, Lord God, as we go to our several places of abode. We go to work. We go to school, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord God, to just do what you want us to do, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to seek you first, Lord God, to acknowledge you, Lord God, in everything that we do, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, and we praise you, Lord God. Watch over the kids. Lord God, this week, Lord God, while they're on spring break, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, Lord God, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord God, and bring us back at the next appointed time in Jesus' name.